he doesn't have the normal life that you and I would think of. These people sleep very little. These people travel a lot. And these people spend from their own money in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make sure that Islam gets pushed on, that Islam is carried on to every corner of this world. They also defend in those times where the fitna starts and those people who have diseases in their heart, they come and they attack Islam and they're the first ones. They're on the forefront of defending Islam. They're the ones who say, you're wrong and this is why. And they lay it down and they explain it and they debate and they argue and they write articles and they make TV shows and they make videos on YouTube and posts on social media and they make sure that they counter the flood that is out there in the world the flood of allegations of misconceptions that they make sure that the real message of Islam reaches out and reaches those non-Muslims who want it who are looking for it and they make sure that they stop the fire that comes from the other side of those people who want to turn off, who want to burn the message of Islam. This is why we call it defense against disaster, because apostasy is a disaster. It's the worst thing. Spiritual death is the worst thing. They can do anything they want to your body. They can do anything. They can take away from you your wealth. They can take away from you your health. They can take away from you your property and your family and everything. And still, at the end of the day, you will succeed bi-idhnillah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the jannah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if they take away your faith, you lose in this life and you lose in the hereafter. And you have to be. You have to be very, very careful. And you have to be very, very aware that these things are happening. Don't be comfortable. Don't think, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, I'm Muslim. Always ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect you. Always ask Allah to protect your heart. Always ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep you on the firm path, the path of guidance. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to always ask Allah for guidance. He used to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep his heart steady on the deen. We said the dua, Allahumma ya muqallib al kulub Thabbit qalbi ala deenik. The dua that we know. So we need to make sure, brothers and sisters, that we make dua to protect ourselves. The dua is the fortress of the believer. It protects him. Invoke Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by the name al Hafid, the one who is the protector. Invoke Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep your, your heart steady in the deen. Because you don't know the fitting of today are huge. And as the Prophet said, that someone will wake up as a believer, go to sleep as this believer, go to sleep as a believer, wake up as this believer. That people exit the deen faster than an arrow exits the bow. So you have to be careful. You have to fear for your faith. Fear for your family's faith. Fear for your community. Fear for your brothers and sisters. Don't just get, you know, relaxed. Back there, laying on the couch. The question goes back to you, what have you done for this deen? What have you contributed to this Ummah with? Have you learned anything? Have you donated anything? Have you participated in anything? What are you doing in your society? What is your contribution? Don't expect always the same people, the same dua, the same scholars to come and answer the time when people are attacking you. Some report comes on a certain news channel, Everyone's looking for the Facebook uh, account or Sheikh so-and-so. So what, what the answer is? Or who's going to talk? Or who's going to stop these people? Okay, fine. Of course, the people of knowledge and the people representatives are the ones who should say something. But how do you help them? How do you make it easier for them? How many allegations and how many attacks are there today? Do you think that these people have time to go through all of these things? And we're just waiting, waiting for them to come up? Where is your participation? Where is your share in this? The responsibility. Do you feel responsible at all? Do you feel responsible? When people are attacking your Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, 
Do you feel responsible? When people are saying bad things about him, Salah do you feel responsible? Or are you joining the bandwagon and start doubting and, oh, maybe this is you know, not good and you know, back in those days, and, you know, I don't know, now the time is different, we shouldn't do this. And you start being ashamed of your deen, you start changing your name. You start saying that my name is not Muhammad, my name is Mike. My name is not Ibrahim, my name is Abe. What's going on? Where are we? Where is the status? Look around, open the news. Open the news, flip the channels. Okay, try to do a very simple experiment. Okay, look at the different, take at least five different news media channels. Take five different social media platforms and see the amount of negativity against Islam. Compute it. Get a percentage. And compare that to how much da'wah we're doing. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, we praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that there are people who are involved in da'wah. Alhamdulillah. But they are a fraction compared to the enemies of Islam. Compared to those people who are working around the clock with huge budgets. We're not talking about here, you know, just some YouTube channels. You're talking here about budgets, yearly budgets of organizations, groups of people who have a clear goal. As Allah says in the Quran, يُرِيدُونَ لِيُطْفِئُ نُورَ اللَّهِ بِأَفْوَاهِهِمْ They want to turn off the light of Allah by their mouths. Why by their mouths? Because they want to say things. They always want to accuse, to ridicule, to shock you, to tell you things that will make you doubt yourself. So that you exit. Very simple. So that you exit. They'll never be satisfied with you till you follow their milla, their path, their way. And even then, even then, they will still not be fully satisfied. They will still say, ah, this guy used to be a Muslim. Ah, his name is Muhammad. You have to change everything. Well, look what happened in Bosnia. Remember the story. When the invaders came. And they were talking to Muslim Bosnians, you know. You know, people were saying, leave the city, leave the village, go. So some people said, man, we're not Muslim, we don't, I don't believe in, believe in this. I don't believe in this. So the soldiers of the other army would come, and they would find this person. The whole village left. A couple of people sitting there, like nothing happened. It's like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> what are you doing, running like everyone else? They said, I'm not Muslim, I don't believe in this. I'm communist, I'm whatever. They said, really? What's your name? Mahmed. Muhammad. Okay. Pfft. See you. They could care less what you say. Another incident. Same thing. The guy said, I'm not Muslim. What's your name? Even his name was not Muslim. I changed my name. Everything. He said, okay. They checked whether he's circumcised or not. And they found that he was circumcised. He said, okay. Boom. Done. Deal with him. See. <laughs> They will not stop. People will not stop, brothers. So why are you leaving? Why? Why are people confused? Why are people confused? Why not stand strong intellectual through education, through awareness, community effort, everyone putting and doing their share? We can do so many things. If you don't have any skills, put some money in it. If you don't have that, maybe you have a skill. Maybe you're good at videos. Maybe you're good at writing. Maybe you're good at speaking. Maybe you can answer emails for one of the sheikhs. Maybe you can run a Facebook page. Maybe you can advertise. Maybe you can, whatever it is, you can participate and do. We're going to take a short break. We'll be right back. Dialogue. Dialogue. Discussion, 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 debate, 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 rebuttal, rebuttal, rebuttal conclusion, conclusion. Eliminate misconceptions about religion. Get enlightened. Witness Dr. Zakir Naik in a battle of words in Crossfire every Saturday at 8.30 p.m. and repeat telecast at 12.30 p.m. UK on Peace TV. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back. Let us continue with the allegation that 
women are inferior to men. Previously, we gave the hadith of Abu Sa'id al-Qudri that Prophet ﷺ told them when he went to the Eid prayer to the women that all oh, women give alms, as I've seen the majority of the dwellers of hellfire are you. And we talked about the gems from this hadith, the way the women responded. They say, oh, Mr. Jawallah, they ask questions as opposed to questioning. They say, why is it so? Look at the, the respect. If someone will ever say like that today, they'll quote this hadith, they'll say, look at this. You are this and you are that. And they would insult that person. But see our own, the believers, they ask and they have manners. They say, oh, Mr. Jawallah, why is it so? They're asking a question, not questioning. They have sincere intentions. And he told them, because you curse a lot and you are ungrateful to your husband. So we talked about that. And then, I have not seen anyone more deficient in intelligence and religion than you. Two allegations here, two things. That they're deficient in intelligence and that in religion. And that a cautious, sensible man could be led astray. And we talked about in the previous episode how women can be a huge fitna for men. There is no deny about that. How many of men complain of the fitna of the women? And then the women will say, yeah, but it's your fault. You should look down. And of course, this is what Allah subhanahu wa has orders to do. But where you're surrounded, and not just that if you look down, the high heels will make the sound to make sure that it destroys your brain, distracts you and pulls you. That no doubt, you know, you will look. So it's not like that. But again, the women asked, O Messenger of Allah, what is deficient in our intelligence and religion? Again, look at that. He pretty much, if to someone this would sound like an insult, look at the reply. Again, O Messenger of Allah, polite, very polite. What is deficient? Again, they're asking. First they asked why they're in hell, the majority of them. Then they asked what is deficient. They want to know why, what. They're asking those important questions of communication as opposed to just shutting down and just saying whatever we don't believe in this let us go they care they want to take an action they want to change themselves today when you give someone an advice they take it as a an insult someone says brother sister you know you should be careful you're like this or like that or i saw this or this or that in you just say what get lost get lost i don't want to talk to you you have insulted me who do you think you are you don't know me no see these people they want to take advice. So he explained to them, because they asked. He said, is not the evidence of two women equal to the witness of one man? Pay attention here of the geniusness of the Prophet ﷺ. He is asking them through a question. He wants them to give the answer because he understands how sensitive this is. He didn't say, your testimony is that of one man. No. He is asking, isn't it true that that's how it is? They didn't say, oh, it doesn't make sense. How come our testimony is uh, that of one man, two women equal to one man? So that would lead to another questioning or another doubt. No. They said, it is. They reply in the affirmative. See, <laughs> they knew. This, he said, this is the deficiency in our intelligence. He didn't say, a'udhu billah, that they're dumb. He didn't say, a'udhu billah that they have no brain. He didn't say, Allah, they have no spirit or soul as they were accused in the past. He explained to them what it means. He said, this is their, the deficiency in their intelligence. They didn't say that she doesn't know how to remember things or that she doesn't know math or can't speak or can't solve problems. No. Then he had, isn't it true that a woman can either pray or fast during her menses? The woman replied in the affirmative. They said, yes. He said, this is a deficiency in religion. Look at the genius, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. See, he explained to them. So because they can't pray all the time, they cannot fast because of their menses, because they're created differently, remember? So they're deficient in the religion. Women will know, how do they feel after they have their period and they return back to prayer? They have to again get back into it. It's not easy. They're used to five, six, seven days of a break. And mashallah, this is rahmah from Allah. Look, <laughs> when people accuse Islam of being unfair, this is the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a break that they take. 
Subhanallah. Does the woman have to make up the prayer that she misses during a misses? No. Again, rahmah of Allah. Fasting? Yes, that's a different story. Look at the mercy of Allah. Subhanallah. If she misses seven days of prayers, she missed 35 prayers. It's going to be difficult to make it up. She misses seven days of fast, she misses seven fasts. Much easier. Allah is the all-wise. He knows exactly what He gives to His servants. Look at the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Women are busy. Children, they're emotional. Allah gives them a break. Man, we don't have a break. Should we say, ah, oh, this is not fair. This is unequal. We, need, we demand equality. We should also have a break for seven days. MashaAllah, you don't have to pray Fajr. Sleeping in the morning, MashaAllah. Huh? Come on. See? Allah knows exactly who He created, why He created them. SubhanAllah. So He explained to them, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what it means. And they affirmed it. They say, yes, you're right. They didn't question it. If we go back to the deficiency in the intelligence, is not the evidence of two women equal to the witness of a man? The question will come ah, again. Look, why the evidence, the evidence of one man is that of two women? In certain cases, you see again, in certain cases, that is why you have to be careful. They know very well. In certain cases, yes. In certain cases, no. And you find the scholars have talked about this extensively. But you see people jump the horse. They want to just say, ah, see? Again, look, it's not fair. Why? Why might be one of the reasons? See, the proper attitude to take, okay, not always you have to say, oh, I know, I know, I think it's because of this and that. Say, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said so. And we submit. The man is not like the woman. Simple. Allah said it. خلص. I have to find out. Oh, I need to find out. But sometimes it's good to investigate, to understand some of the hikmas. And you find that sometimes because women are emotional, they're much more emotional than men. And they can be persuaded sometimes. They can be coerced to say something under pressure. I'm not saying all of them. Why you might be sitting there watching this say, I'm not like that. But that's not what we're saying. We're saying in general. There are exceptions, of course. But this deen is not based on exceptions. The sharia is not based on exceptions. It's based on the generality. When someone says, you know, oh, I see that uh, uh, cigarettes are haram. Okay, but I've been smoking for so long, I don't have any problem. Okay, the deen is not based because you have no problem on your exception. It's based in general. In general, it causes lung cancer. There you go, simple. The door is closed. So that is why, brothers and sisters, the Prophet ﷺ explained to them clearly, kindly, as to what this means. And sadly, subhanAllah, today we're faced with not just non-Muslims attacking us on this issue. Muslims, feminists, feminist Muslims, from, actually they're sometimes worse than the non-Muslims. That they will come and attack and say, ah, look, we don't believe. And they deny the hadith. And they start changing Islam. And sometimes this is worse than those who are outside of the fold of Islam. Those who are not Muslim. It is worse sometimes from us, from the Muslims. Because now we don't, we don't have any, you know, the Muslim, non-Muslim dialogue. Now you have within the Muslims so many different understanding, philosophies, so many different cultural influences. Everyone's coming and demanding and trying to say that, no, we understand it better. We know it better than the Prophet ﷺ. I don't agree with this hadith. I don't believe in this sir. Subhanallah. Look at the attitude that people have taken. Brothers and sisters, have the attitude of those Ansar and Muhajireen who had sincerity, who witnessed the Prophet Sallallahu who asked questions because they wanted to get into Jannah. They wanted to enter paradise. And they wanted to be protected from hellfire. Remember, there's a difference between asking a question and questioning. And remember that Islam, it is a religion, a faith, a way of equity and not equality. Because equality will not give the full fairness based on how a person is created, what their abilities, 
and capabilities and responsibilities in society are. This is Gabriel Aromani, Defense Against Disaster.